act like people. <laughs> I like to think of the second album as kind of like the older sibling of the first album Ooh, in a way. Nice like choice. in my head, that's how I see it. Because like the first album, I feel like I was getting to know myself as an artist because it was like super quick that all this happened. We were just like, okay, like we're we got this amazing opportunity to record at Orbit in Seattle, which is like an incredible studio, through this other like weird series of events, and then we were like, okay, so we have to record in like two months, or like a month or something, and then we were like, okay, so now we have to like finalize all these songs. Such a, I think it's a very romantic and nostalgic fucking album. I don't know. And you said the meeting was like because of your grandma? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Was my great -grandma. Boom! That's beautiful. Oh, what you're hearing in your head, which is really hard. So, um, but yeah, so we, we recorded these demos and then um, had a friend, Ken Levy, who um, I've known for a few years now. He like builds microphones and is just like kind of a wizard. And um, he came up in Olympia in the 90s, and so he has a lot of friends who are connected with like the 90s Olympia scene of like, you know, Nirvana and Pearl Jam, Soundgarden, those guys. So he um, connected us with a studio in Seattle who uh, his, or his friend owns it and it's called Avast. And um, so we wound up getting in there and it was really um, amazing. We rented that out for like two full days and just got to like kind of take over the studio. And that was with me, Nick, and our um, previous drummer was Eric Gordon who decided to have a baby, so he's like <laughs> off in baby land, and um, so he actually was the one who drummed on the album. Uh, yeah, that was like just, I mean, I think we had prepared so much, like we had practiced so many times, mm -hmm. and honestly those recordings from Logan and Caroline mm. sound so cool. Hopefully someone hears that someday. Yeah, we'll put it like, out as like a B-side thing. Yeah, yeah, like there's, it's almost like the uncut. More like kind of a live show, but mm -hmm. hopefully we'll get one of those this weekend too. You know, mm -hmm. The next level of that, mm -hmm. so maybe it'll be. Yeah, it's just like, yeah, it's just like step by step, like person by person, relationship by relationship, like. Oh yeah. And yeah, I think we've been doing this project for three years. Yeah, now I think too. over three years. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's evolved and changed. Yeah.
so many familiar faces, so many new faces. Thanks everyone for coming. <sighs> We're called Arena. This is our album release show. We put out an album. We wrote it and recorded it and released it, which is sometimes the hardest part, I think. The writing it and the recording it seems to come a little bit easier. And once you have to be like, okay, no more. No more edits, no more overdubs, no more backup vocals, Jesus. And then, and then the world gets to hear it and think all their thoughts. You know, it's fucking nerve wracking, I'm gonna be honest with you. So. Cheers. Each and every one of you, thanks for being here. This is fucking amazing. Um, we're gonna play the whole album, so. Also, congrats to Ani for winning the raffle. That's crazy. I'm really happy about that. And uh, I wouldn't have been happy with anyone, obviously. No bias here. It's always nice knowing it's going to someone who, who's a fan and who will rock that shit.
injecting things into my brain and saying like this is the song um because i really don't know like sometimes it'll show up and it'll just be there and that's what it is and um i feel like a little bit disconnected to the world around me sometimes and so i think that like music allows me to connect to people and the world around me mm -hmm. and um i want to have less of a barrier because I I've heard some music that's like so incredibly raw that I hear and I'm just like whoa like they put it all out there and mm -hmm. like sometimes I feel like I hold things back but um, I know there are a lot of like really personal stories in each of my songs and like sometimes they're like hidden under the surface of the lyrics but like when I sing songs sometimes they make me feel like very intense emotions mm -hmm. and some songs I can't sing because they make me feel such intense emotions but that's just like the reality of writing songs that are important to you.
when we're writing songs, there's a lot of like shouting. There's a lot of like, yes, there's yeah. a lot of like, yes! <laughs> <laughs> uh, <sweet. That. laughs> so like, yeah, no, it's really cool. And like, Nick and I have been playing together for so long now that I feel like, I mean, and also you're just like such a good bass player. Like, it's true. best bass player mm -hmm. that I have ever had the pleasure of like hearing and playing with. Um, and so I find that it's just very easy to like, you know, things just like flow. And that's been a very like solid connection for multiple years now. So props. Cool. Cool. Um, Wait, I have one more metaphor that maybe explains that better. Yeah. It's maybe more like you're writing the script kind of thing and like, uh, there's the scenes that are coming, and it's not, I mean, we're all in the soundtrack of it, too, the soundtrack of it, but in some ways it feels like more like the instruments are more like side characters or those kind of things, like elements within the story that I, or, you know, have various degrees of understanding about in personal associations with. And so by that, it all comes together into like some kind of, film-like montage. <laughs> I see it. <laughs> Yeah. 
here in Olympia because we were like from Olympia so we wanted to do one for like our fans down here and then we we're gonna do one in Seattle so we were like okay we're gonna have like a bunch of different album releases so that people don't have to travel very far to like come you know celebrate the release or whatever. It's okay. It's funny. Bellingham did not work out nope. so we will see we're knocking on wood. Uh, Olympia should work out. The venue is a couple blocks from here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hopefully, we'll make it. Hopefully. Hopefully. No driving. Yeah. No i five. Yeah. Yeah. Just gonna carry all your gear. Like, <laughs> I've never been in a car accident before, but Nick was driving and he handled it like a fucking champion. Hmm. Literally, just like held onto the wheel and kept us from doing any crazy like loop de loops or spins or anything <laughs> that could have happened. We all looked out for each other. Like, hmm. we're you know. We're gonna be okay. And we're not dead. And we ain't dead. So the universe was speaking to us and telling us like you guys have more to do.
good stirs dimensional emotions and I think it's really important mm -hmm. for me yeah. yeah yeah it's a very accessible you know way to care for yourself and others and all that and so yeah I hope that yeah this music yeah makes people feel feel the love and stuff <laughs> and angry. Yeah, totally. I don't know. And the rage. <laughs> and the rage. Yeah, that's the that's the stuff I meant. The love some, and the rage. Yeah. Some catharsis. Yeah, yeah. yeah. catharsis. That's a good word. Let's do it. Yeah, yeah. that's nice. I guess it'd be cool if we could travel the world and share that with people Hell yeah. all over the world. You know, go to Brazil. Just to like, mm -hmm. you know, just bring that, bring it all together. That we all feel the same shit, even though we're all from different places. I guess. Yeah. Cool. Um, I don't know. But what's your goals for music, though? Like, well, music. I've I've thought about this recently, actually, and I just uh, my goals for music is I just want to be able to play music every day of my life. That's oh. all that really matters. Yeah. So as long as I'm doing that, I'm yes. fine. Mm -hmm. That's my hopes and dreams. Yes. That's beautiful. Yeah. 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 I have really crazy hopes and dreams, <laughs> and I literally write them Get on poster boards. Um, <laughs> That's awesome. Not in here, they're hidden, because they're really embarrassing. Um, yeah, uh, music is everything, and uh, I started writing songs when I was like four, so I just want to write songs that are beautiful, and I want to like change the world. And I want people to hear the songs and feel like different than they did before in a good way. Mm -hmm. um, and I want people to like feel feelings that they might not be able to access otherwise. Like, because it's hard for me to feel things sometimes. And like when I hear a song, like I'll be brought to tears. And like, um, that's really important to me. Mm -hmm. And to inspire people. Yeah. yeah. And to like bring about change, mm -hmm. to call out the bullshit in the world, right. and to hopefully like be able to use our voices. Mm -hmm. to make things better. Cheers to you guys. Because honestly, like, music is the most important thing in the world as far as I'm concerned. Like, it's life, it's our blood, it's our fucking history, it's our ancestors, it's in our DNA, every single one of us. And it's important. I don't know, so thanks for being here. Shout out to Eric Gordon, who drummed on this album, actually. And then had a baby, so... Living in baby land now. Little Fox, Fox Gordon, that's the baby's name. Really good name, I know, right? So. And Carlin. Carlin had the baby, physically.
Thank you guys.